In this video, I'm going to be sharing the 10 biggest mistakes in affiliate marketing for 2023. These are lessons that I've learned throughout my nine years of affiliate marketing experience through coaching thousands of students and through earning seven figures in affiliate commission myself. Watch this video through till the end because learning from my mistakes can save you years of trial and error. Let me know in the comments below if you're currently making any of these mistakes or if you've made them in the past and what you're doing to fix them this time around. Also sharing in the comments can help other people learn from your experience as well. All right, let's start with the first mistake, which is focusing your time and energy on the wrong things or not focusing most of your energy on revenue generating activities. So I have a really cool chart here from growthbadger.com. And this was a survey taken from over 1000 bloggers and it's showing the factors of what makes a blog successful from bloggers earning over $50,000 per year to lower income bloggers who are not as successful. Now I find this data very interesting because essentially we can use this to determine what are probably the highest revenue generating activities that we should be focusing on if we want to model success. So the first one here, we have quality of content, which both the successful and the non-successful rank highly. Then we have eye-catching headlines and introductions, SEO, email subscribers, and site appearance design and performance as the top five factors. Now what's interesting to me that jumps out is that SEO, email subscribers, site appearance design and performance, these have quite high discrepancies between the successful and the unsuccessful. So that may give you a little bit of a clue as to what the less successful bloggers are doing. For years, I've preached about the power of SEO as a sales channel for affiliate marketing because it is the number one sales channel for affiliates backed by data. And secondly, I've talked about email subscribers as a way to maximize your profit and to own your customer list. Lastly, site appearance, design, and performance is all important because if you want to get accepted into affiliate programs, you do have to have a professional looking website. And in this day and age of instant gratification, you also need a website that's super fast and loads quickly. That performance is going to translate into your core web vitals inside of of Google Search Console, and this will give you a boost in rankings over slower, outdated websites. Now, the second biggest mistake is not building on a platform that you directly own or building on a platform that doesn't have most of your potential customers. So according to the data, I actually wrote seven interesting data points and research from the affiliate marketing industry in 2022. And the top three affiliate sources are SEO, social media, and blogging. Now, two out of the three of these top affiliate sources are channels that you can directly own, which is having your own website. Too many times I see affiliates who try to simply do affiliate marketing on free social media platforms like on Facebook and Instagram. And although these can be viable channels for sales, it's not building a really long-term foundation for an actual business with assets that you own that is not under the power of a social media network or an algorithm. So in short, you need to stop being just an affiliate and start thinking more like a business owner. Own your platform and build tangible assets such as having a website, an email list, having consistent traffic, SEO ranks, rankings, these are things that are sustainable in the long term to drive sales for months and years to come. If you're relying on these quick one off sales on something like a Facebook group, then it's simply something that can't run on its own without you. And it's never going to be close to passive income. It's just going to be working a job and working sales. The moment that you stop, that's the moment that your income stops as well. I would choose platforms with good discoverability, such as SEO via your own website, because Google search is where most of the affiliate sales are going to come from. Those customers who have the search intent, YouTube, because it's the second biggest search engine in the world. It is a great format long form video for selling affiliate products and three TikTok, which is short form video, but it is really hot right now. And discoverability is really high. If you're relying on a channel like Facebook, for example, there are certain products that you simply just do not sell. And I do not do research when I am purchasing products such as a gaming mice, for example, I'd more likely go to YouTube or TikTok to get information about that specific category of products. Also thinking outside the bubble of affiliate marketing, if you do have your own website and your own brand or your own YouTube channel, you can monetize through many different means outside of just affiliate sales. And you can also do sponsorships, ad revenue. You can sell your own digital products. You can do consulting. The list goes on and on. When you actually own the platform, you can have a lot more flexibility. Now, moving on to the third mistake, which is not utilizing the latest technology and software to make your life easier. At the end of the day, affiliates have to wear many different hats. So there's a framework called jobs to be done. As an affiliate, your jobs to be done include things like copywriting, content creation, web development and design, 
video editor, graphic designer, SEO expert. One thing I'm grateful about my affiliate career is that it has taught me how to do so many things through the computer and doing something such as creating a logo, which I did in my last video live using a free tool like Canva. Editing videos to me is like second nature, but when I see someone who's never edited a video before, it reminds me how far I've come in my own video editing journey as well. Now, software is a beautiful thing because it simply makes us humans more efficient. It can turn a one-person business into a full-blown operation. What I've learned from trying out and using all sorts of different software throughout my career is that the goal is to free up as much of your time as possible to strictly focus on revenue generating activities. At the end of the day, we're trying to get more productivity out of the hours that we're working. So we need to talk about the elephant in the room, which is AI. So ChatGPT by OpenAI allows you to basically insert a prompt and have it generate text. And you can even generate things like art, one thing that's very disruptive about this, you can essentially create and generate content in seconds that you used to have to pay a freelancer to create on something like Fiverr. You'd have to pay them 50 to $100 to generate the same output essentially. I've paid for some articles being made on some of those freelancer platforms and I've paid upwards of over $100 for less than a thousand words and honestly what is generated from things like chat gpt is more impressive to me faster and cheaper another software example i have is jetpage this is the website platform that i transferred all of my wordpress affiliate websites over to if you saw my last video how to start affiliate marketing in 2023 i was able to create this affiliate website qualityofplay.com that i'm going to be working on as a side project this year focus on gaming mice and office peripherals i was able to do that in basically just a couple minutes and this is a platform that is so simple to use and I never have to worry about performance, design, technical SEO, core web vitals, maintenance, updating plugins, security ever again. That alone is saving me hours of my time each day on activities that were not revenue generating and instead I can focus on just content creation, publishing, marketing, and getting sales. And that's the real job of an affiliate. It's not to tinker with your website and update plugins and deal with all this maintenance and essentially be a web developer or designer. Your goal is to be an affiliate marketer. It's to create content, it's to get sales, impressions, clicks. So if you're wasting your time doing any of this maintenance level type stuff, then it's not contributing to your end goals and you're simply not as efficient as you could be. Now, the fourth mistake, which is really going to tank your SEO this year, is not having an even split between your affiliate content and your informational content. Now, most beginners only make affiliate content. Therefore, their site or their business is created 100% on purely affiliate content. That is content that mostly contains affiliate links and that is selling something. Whereas informational content, on the other hand, is not really selling any direct products and it's purely informational for people who are searching up questions or queries on Google. Now, the reason you need to focus on having a 60 to 40% split, now this is just my estimate at what I think the optimal split between your content is, and that is due to two Google SEO updates. These are the product review update, which there's been about, I think, five iterations of this thus far, and also the helpful content update. Essentially, these two updates, I think, were aimed at removing a lot of the low quality spammy affiliate websites out there. And let's be honest here, a lot of affiliate sites tend to be low quality with content that, you know, they use things like content spinners and it's just very thin content that doesn't provide a lot of value. Now, this is actually good news for anyone who's thinking, I don't have any affiliate products to review. What can I do? You can start by writing tons of informational content that doesn't require any products in hand. You just have to answer questions. And software like ChatGPT is actually perfect for this type of task because on the other hand, it's not good for actually creating content on reviewing products that you need to actually have in your hand. Like at the end of the day, it's basically rehashing or just predicting the next word that you know makes sense. And that's why it can't really produce a original original content now it can produce original content that's not technically plagiarized but what i'm saying is it's not going to be able to review something like this microphone because you know at the end of the day it's just an ai it's not a person who gets this in hand who understands things like audio recording streaming and essentially it's not going to be able to ever you know take photos of this microphone it's not going to be able to make video content it's not going to be able to make recordings for people to listen to as a test so a field marketing in some ways is not really disrupted by ai simply because like really good product review content just cannot be 
generated. But on the flip side, answering simple questions, I think ChatGPT can do an amazing job at speeding up the content creation of that type of content. All right, so mistake number five, and this is one that I see every single year time and time again, and that is poor goal setting as an affiliate. Most newbies goals are always results-based. They're never effort-based. As a beginner, it's really easy to see all of these millions of dollars made online and to just say to yourself, I really want to make $10,000 a month. That is my starting goal. I would push back on that and I would say first focus on making $100 a month before we start talking about $1,000 or even $10,000 a month. Now, an effort-based goal would be superior to this and that would be something like, I will write and publish one high-quality blog post or YouTube video per week every single week this year for a total of 52 pieces of content by the end of the year. I guarantee you, if you stick to that goal and you actually follow through, you're gonna get way more results than the person who just writes down, I wanna make $10,000 a month, and then has no actual tactical plan to achieve that. Now, tying in with unrealistic goals is also having an unrealistic timeline and not understanding how long things take in affiliate marketing. So this also ties in with the shiny object syndrome. I mean, every single day, there are so many different online business opportunities, make money online opportunities, and online business models that you're getting pulled in so many different directions and you end up just hopping from one opportunity to another. And you do each thing for like two or three months and then you quit and then you start again, try something new, do it for two or three months, then you quit. But I mean, doing this is just never going to produce results. I think at the end of the day, most of these online business opportunities and these business models, they do work. It's just finding what is your preference and what fits your lifestyle goals in the long run. But then also, what is the one that you're gonna stick with? Because any of these you try for just a couple months and it doesn't work, you're never going to get that initial traction. And sometimes, especially with affiliate marketing and internet businesses, is you have a long period where, or very, very little impressions and traffic, and it just seems like nothing is happening. And then all of a sudden, nine to 12 months later, your website, or your YouTube channel may explode in maybe one single video that goes viral and then it just lifts everything up. And from that point on, you just have an actual business, but you had to put in a lot of months of hard work and dedication with getting minimal to zero results in order to reach that inflection point. If I had quit my first year, I would have made zero dollars with affiliate marketing, but instead I stuck with it and eventually earned over a million dollars. But my best successes did not come on my first try. It had to come on my second, my third, my fourth, different affiliate websites where I was learning and taking everything I was learning from those first, second, third tries and I was implementing it into the next iteration or the next business model or niche and I was able to move much, much faster that time around. For most of my students, the ones who are most successful and who get success the fastest tend to have failed in the past. They tend to have tried other different business models like dropshipping, Amazon FBA. They learned some lessons from there and then they took it to affiliate marketing and then they even tried one or two different affiliate websites and their third one tends to be the one that actually takes off and the one that actually creates a full-time income, allows them to quit their job. But I know time and time again, it's usually not their first try. And I mean, it would be great if it was, but for most people, it's just unrealistic to hit a home run on your first attempt. So to give you some concrete timelines on what you can expect with affiliate marketing, first off, you know, content takes one to eight weeks to index on something like Google search. There's so many different websites and different pages being built every single day, like millions and millions of pages that it's a lot of work for the Google bot to crawl and to discover and to index all of these things. And they choose not to index everything because let's be honest here, a lot of stuff is not really high quality enough to even be worth indexing these days. Now, if you're able to stick with it and you are able to start getting your pages indexed, it's gonna take six to nine months for your content to mature on the search engine. What this means essentially is that it's going to take time before your content starts to really rank where it's creating significant amount of impressions and clicks. Now, on the other hand, I have seen some students' websites that were able to grow relatively quickly, even in the early days. But honestly, the biggest bulk of results and when websites start to take off tends to be around the nine to 12 month mark if they've been posting one to two posts per week consistently for that year. A great initial goal for anyone who's starting out is to get to 40 to 50 blog posts in the first year. Now, if you're doing a channel like YouTube or TikTok, it's gonna be different. For YouTube, it obviously has a higher production value. And so if you can only do one video per month, but it's high quality and it's good, then I would say that's a good frequency. 
TikTok, on the other hand, short form content that probably takes minutes to make, honestly, you could probably knock out one to two, if not three videos per week. And if you're able to keep that up, it's only a matter of time before something hits and goes viral. Either way, it's all a learning experience. And especially with something like a website, if you are creating active content and you're posting it to a custom domain, you are aging that domain, which is further improving just the validity and the credibility of your website, even if you're not really actively posting like every single week if you just have it where you're posting one post every single month at the very least that's better than doing nothing at all with your domain if it's just sitting on godaddy and it's not actually connected to a live website all right so mistake number six is consistency and motivation this is something that i see so many people struggle with and at the end of the day i think one of the best advice here is to start small and to break things down into bite-sized chunks. When I was really building recording now, I was also working a full-time nine to five job that was just completely sucking my energy and my time obviously throughout the day. So I could only really work on my business after hours once I would come home from work, from the gym, from eating dinner. And then I would have maybe a couple hours per day to work on it if I had the energy and I didn't play Call of Duty Black Ops 2 instead. So what I would do on the first days, I would actually just write an outline and like a rough, rough draft of the script. The second day, I would actually write that script and try to finalize it. The third day, I would do the voiceover and it would actually take me a whole day to do the voiceover because I was really self-conscious about my voice. So I would repeat every single line like five times before I get it all together in GarageBand and export it. Fourth day, I filmed B-roll, nothing but just filming all sorts of different shots in B-roll that I didn't know if I was gonna use every single shot. I just took a bunch of it and then I would take it on my SD card, I would upload it to my computer and that's all I would do for that day. Fifth day, I would actually put the video together Together with a voiceover I had recorded and then also all of that b-roll I would try and figure out was the best way to edit this throw it all together to make a final video and on the sixth day I would usually publish both the blog post and the YouTube video around the same time essentially the blog post would just be the script from the video but you would have to format it and I would have to do all these things to get it prepared to actually publish on my website to look good to have the affiliate links etc at the end of the day, I think it just comes down to having no 0% days. It's just to do a little bit every single day because those do add up. All right, so mistake number seven is choosing the wrong niche for you just because it's profitable. So in my last video, I talked about my free training where I have a list of 22 high ticket affiliate marketing niches that are very profitable. Now, beginners tend to look at this list and see things like finance, for example, that are very lucrative, but at the same time have a high barrier of entry and are very competitive. Typically, higher profitability equals higher competition. And what newbies don't realize is you can't just jump up to these types of niches that have high barrier of entry because you simply won't be able to compete and thus you will get very discouraged and you're going to quit. Another mistake that I see newbies make is that they tend to move away from what they know best, such as their job, the industry, or their hobbies. And they tend to focus again on these like high ticket, high profitability niches in basically realms where they have zero competitive advantage or domain knowledge. Typically the things that you already know from like, let's say your day job or a hobby or passion is what you're gonna have a competitive advantage in and what you're going to understand. A lot of the nuances without even needing to use software, you're going to know things like what are the hot topics or trends or keywords right now. And that's sort of the gift of doing a niche that you actually know a lot about. And the last mistake I see with this is not niching down small enough. And one thing that's interesting is you don't necessarily need to start with having the smallest niche in mind. You can start a little bit general. And then let's say you create 10 pieces of content and out of those 10 pieces of content, one or two of them seems to be getting more traction than the others. That's typically how things work, at least in my experience. And what I did with something like recording now is I hyper focus on headphones once I saw the data that said that headphones were getting way more views and sales than any of the other product categories. Because initially I started with a kind of a broad niche of just home recording equipment. This could be microphones, audio interfaces, headphones, etc. And when I did a pair of headphones, I realized that it had a much wider reach because headphones are something that both consumers and prosumers can use, such as people who are, you know, making music, but also people who just like listening to music, which is basically everybody. So, you know, I learned that by looking at the data after the fact, not before I launched the business, but once you're looking back, you're taking a step back and you're just looking at the data, then these things become more clear the direction in which you should go. Now mistake number eight, and it pains me to see this, but doing poor keyword research or none at all. So referencing that growthbadger.com article again, 
we have here in the survey, which types of research do you use to help decide what to write about or publish? And you can see for the successful bloggers earning over 50K per year, the top two are social media research and keyword research. Now, when we say social media research, again, this is why I say that if you're in a niche and let's say that you're on Reddit or you're on TikTok or you're on YouTube, you know what the best keywords or the highest keywords are right now because you are so deep into that niche that you just know intuitively what's going to get views because you are a consumer yourself. You're someone who sees what's out there, what's working, and you can model after that. So you can see here, number three is my blog's traffic data. That's a great one that I personally have used a lot, whether through Google Analytics or Google Search Console on my websites. You also have competitor research. You can use a tool like Ahrefs, SEMrush to do competitor research, see what are their top ranking keywords. But then if you look at these last two, relying on my own judgment or asking someone I know personally is 71% for the lower income bloggers and even 18% do zero keyword research at all. And to me, this is just insane. Like we're literally seeing the difference between success and failure. And the 80-20 here is to focus on having good keyword research opportunities because your keyword opportunities are going to determine the ceiling or the cap that your content has. Because at the end of the day, if it doesn't have enough volume and traction, then it's never going to produce very many sales. But if you're relying on your own judgment, and again, you're not like, let's say you're not an expert in a certain space, this is just a recipe for a disaster. Also asking someone you personally know doesn't make them an expert in that space. So that's something that it's convenient, yes, but it's not effective. Lastly, 18% doing zero research at all. I mean, that probably explains why they are not as successful as the ones who do. So mistake number nine is not spending at least 20% of your time marketing your content and building backlinks. So what I see typically is people will spend 100% of their time on creating content, sometimes like making really, really good content, like let's say a YouTube video that's well edited, it's well researched, it's put together. And the problem is, you can't just release it and then move on to the next thing, which is why I see so many people do. They hit publish or they hit upload and then they just move on to the next piece of content. They don't think about it twice. They just say, hey, you know, I'll let the algorithm handle it and it's gonna take care of itself. People will come, you know? And that is simply not the case. I've heard some people say you should spend half your time marketing your content as you do creating it. I believe it should be 80-20 split, but either way, there's a split here between when you're creating the content, putting all that hours and energy into it, and then also marketing it to make sure that it's getting eyeballs. Because if it's not getting impressions or exposure, then you're simply not gonna be getting any traffic or sales. So for me, what you can do to market your content, you can do simple things like distribute it on other social media platforms or other communities. Another one's building backlinks, although if you're a beginner, I wouldn't spend too much time on building backlinks. I would focus on getting that 40 to 50 pieces of content because if you have like three pieces of content, there isn't much reason to link out to you unless that one article you created was like really, really, really good. You need to have authority for it to be worth it. And with much content comes things like domain authority. Backlinks come naturally once you're building up and I would just focus on you know yourself and staying in your own lane and these things tend to come and then you can have more directed efforts on building backlinks in the future once you've already built a good foundation, a good base. Taking a look at this from Growth Badger, how important are these marketing channels for you? You can see the top two easily are Google, Unpaid Organic, and email. Not only that, there's a big discrepancy between the lower income bloggers and the successful ones when it comes to Google and email. I think that explains a lot about why they are not as successful. And you can see how the unsuccessful tend to focus a little bit too much on Facebook as opposed to Google and email where a lot of warm leads are gonna come from. For me, I would actually rank YouTube a lot higher as well just because I'm someone who really likes video, especially for the niches that I do. And I think YouTube deserves to be much higher, but you can still even see a discrepancy there between the successful and the unsuccessful, the unsuccessful are barely paying attention to YouTube when I think it is probably number one or number two of where you should invest in 2023. So mistake number 10 is a low ticket versus high ticket. Why sell $30 products when you can sell $300 products and earn 10 times as much commission for the same amount of energy and effort? Now you do have to find the sweet spot between volume of sales and profitability. If all you do is sell really, really expensive products that are, let's say in the $1,000, $2,000 range, you're not gonna be getting as much volume as selling cheaper products. So I like to find that sweet spot in the middle where you're getting decent enough volume, but at the same time, there's profitability that's much, much higher than these really, really cheap affiliate products that are low ticket that you're gonna need to make 
thousands of sales just to make a living and it's just not sustainable unless you have like a massive massive amount of traffic all right so that wraps up the top 10 biggest mistakes for affiliate marketing beginners in 2023 let me know what you think in the comments below let me know if you're making any of these mistakes or if you've made these in the past and share with others so that we can all learn from your experience just like you guys are learning from mine lastly if you want to see that list of the 22 high ticket affiliate marketing niches along with so much additional content i do have a free six hour training on my website odiproductions.com just click the get free course button in the top right put in your info you're going to get a link to where you can sign up for the teachable course and here you can access it you can watch all the modules for free i've been getting tons of positive responses about this free training so thank you guys so much i'm glad it's delivering value for you and if you missed it in my last video i talked about how to start a film marketing in 2023 for beginners and this is basically a shortened version of that six hour training and it also shows me building an affiliate business live that i actually plan to tackle as a live case study this year do it as a side hustle and share the results with you guys so if you want to learn more about that make sure to check out my last video i'm going to link it here at the end of this and if you do enjoy this content make sure to hit the like button comment below so i can make more content like this maybe you can give me some suggestions on what kind of content you want to see in the future and make sure to subscribe hit the notification bell because i will be trying to upload one to two videos per week so make sure you don't miss it thank you guys so much for watching i'll catch you in the next video